since I didn't get around to it in full last part, let's go over rider levels and attributes now. Levels 2, 5, 8 and 11 give you a specialization point, which Pavlov has, and allows us to pick one of these terrain traits that allows us to go faster on certain terrains. I'll explain how that works mechanically later on. This may seem weird, but I'm actually going to make a second climber with Pavlov because his major fitness peak is at Chrono Ridge, and I want him to get to level 5 as quick as possible. As for Herman Watson, an attribute point, and you can see you have a pool of energy, a pool of attack. If you ran out of Ivy, you can't use that attribute anymore. So I want more attack with the intention of improving his attack per turn on the next level up. Because regardless of anything else, you need speed in this game to be able to break away and win. Later on with Watson, we'll also need more recovery because the five major tours are all 14 stages or longer, with two of them being grand tours going the full 21. This, the Giro Fruinia. In the meantime though, amateur tours are very short, just three stages here. This isn't a major target for any of our riders, but Perry is on a minor peak and being level 5 makes him above average by amateur standards, so capable of a result. Meanwhile, Pavlov doesn't have anything else to do on this tour, so why not try for the Red Mountain jersey by taking this breakaway? Now as for how the game determines what terrain you're riding over, it looks at all of the nodes in between your start and end node non-inclusive. So here, Pavlov's effectively riding over mountain nodes only and hence gets a plus one in three movement, allowing him to attack and win this mountain rating. It gets a bit more complex when you're going over multiple terrain types in a single move, but before I go over that, there's a sprint train to attend to. This would have been good position had the lead rider's move been the one that stuck, but the last rider in P0 went a little bit further and that put us too far to the front, another opportunity squandered. So in what if you're going to win a sprint from near the front, you need three things. A good lead out rider, the actual sprinter of course, and another one or two riders that can box out anyone trying to beat your sprinter from behind. Going back to terrain, Technical sectors are unique in that they add a penalty to whatever terrain you're going over unless you have the relevant specialization to negate it. And if you're going over multiple terrain types in a single move, it's the worst modifier that counts. This gives uh, all-rounders more flexibility in how they approach the stage compared to specialists who want to be using their best stats as much as possible. I got spooked by Pavlov's tiredness here because I actually tried to have Ward go after the red jersey now but the pace was too high for him to ever break away and in fact the leaders decide to go super early because the peloton are already tired. I have to take up the entire burden of the chase to try to minimize the time loss. Even though the front group's not cooperating that well, we only have so many helpers for Perry and there aren't a lot of great jumps I can make on this terrain either. We are going to lose time on this stage, though we do pick up some of the stragglers on our way in. And actually, I misremembered the result here. Perry made it all the way back to second with only Makarov from the group that went super early surviving. Uh, see, I'm doing post-commentary. I wasn't satisfied with the audio balance of the live take of Season 1, and also this gives me a chance to explain game mechanics without the pressure of only having one take to explain everything. And uh, because I'm doing post-commentary, sometimes I don't quite recall everything that happened to 100% detail. Pavlov can attack away and get three more mountain points, but it's only enough to put him in a tie with Caruso for the mountain jersey, which he will lose the tie break of because Caruso is better on GC. Aside from that, very gentle stage until the very end. Bit dangerous for Perry to have a summit finish, but this move into the climb is actually a hybrid of flattened mountain, so he's not as inconvenienced by that. 
but it's actually Campbell who has the best legs on our team for the day. His six attack per turn allowing him to follow the fastest move up the climb whilst Perry has to settle into group two. Thankfully for Perry, his main GC rival, Adrian Clean, makes an even slower move, solidifying second in the overall classification. Whilst Campbell doesn't have much of a move left in him, but holds on to second for the stage. Klein's Vista Watch's teammate Fisher follows Perry in, and that's enough for him to take third on GC. Campbell ends up in sixth, and even though Pavlov lost the tiebreaker, that's still good for some prestige points. So really, a successful tour for everyone on our team, except for Ward, and Ward has the excuse of being a level 1 rider. He'll get his chances later. Back to scouting then, and here's an example of how our otherwise good-looking rider can be rendered unusable by a poor build. Otto Moller, 11 potential, but only 5 attack. He's not going to be doing much of anything, and since you need to be getting results to maximise your experience yield, it's going to take far too long to fix him, meaning a different rider is better for the shortlist. The second major tour of the pro season, Vista Het Vizio, a lot of climbing, so I imagine Herman's eventually going to need at least a plus two in Mountain to win this one, and most tours for that matter. Walter Stein, in this particular running, able to get XL Velo some much needed ranking points, while we have a flat classic. Pretty long, so could be a war of attrition, but there is also going to be a lot of slipstream out there. Herman Watson is our domestique for the race. Perry's on a major fitness peak, and if the race is hard, he will be the main guy in the end. A gentler pace favours Pavlov as he has better sprint qualities at a minor peak. But as it turns out, the pace has been gentle enough that the morning breakaway might actually win this. I decide Pavlov is our second teammate now because I do want to try and get Ward into the top 10. He needs the result to get a level up and Pavlov's got his major target coming up. Uh, we try and chase down this breakaway but uh, this is this is the uh, race I remember that I thought were, had happened last month. There weren't a lot of good places to jump to and so we couldn't chase down the breakaway. And uh, actually, Pavlov still has enough energy towards the end of this race to be a factor despite going into the relay. Ward's going to get dropped here, so obviously that part of the plan has backfired. And it's also a shame that Breakaway Trio is going to hold out to the end because this would have been the winning group with Perry and Pavlov otherwise. But instead, we also bottle the sprint and we're going to come home 6th and 7th when if we'd at least chased down the breakaway, that could have been a podium for Perry. Uh, it could have been worse, but that certainly could have been better too. We do nonetheless get over 100 ranking points. Not that it really matters, because we've long since achieved our sponsor target, and there's no way we're getting promoted this season. More importantly, that does give Ward enough residual EXP to level up, and I'll say right now, I'm forbidding myself from using the time trial specialization on Pavlov or Watson because I think that's a little bit too overpowered to be able to tank sprint to get so many extra attack points. But that doesn't mean I can't use it on my main helper rider and I think Ward can fulfill that role. Much better scout this time around. Dieter Kuhn, level 5 with 11 potential. The only issue is that since I want to make sure I can afford Pavlov and Watson's contracts, in the long term we might not be able to keep Kun around too, even with the highest sponsor funding. Pro season continues with the Great Plains Tour, and this could be the spanner in the works for Watson's Grand Slam's ambitions, because if we make a pure climber, I think we can win the other four tours easily enough, but there's not a lot of chances to gain time on the Great Plains, and a flat rider has a much easier time of it. Meanwhile, oh jeez, Gerhard Horn is in the Chrono Ridge. He won the Giro Fruinia earlier this year, and now us amateurs have to somehow try and beat him. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Pavlov can still fight for the minor placings here. He does have a lot of speed up this climb. 
but it would have been a lot nicer if we could have reached that 8 node within 2 turns. We're going to come up one short with Pavlov and that is going to wreck any chance at the top 5. Gerhard Horn doesn't actually win the race. Stefan Schmidt made a big first two moves and even though he tired out, almost got caught, just held on by less than a hundredth of a turn. Pavlov does roll through in sixth. Our other riders, they were here to give it a go but ultimately they didn't have enough speed. Not even Watson, who I would have thought this route would have favoured to some extent. Since this was a mixed level race, however, any result gets double the ranking points of an equivalent amateur race. So 125 points, more than enough for Pavlov to get his next level up, and it's an attribute upgrade. I would like to get some recovery on him, even though he's a one day specialist, because as we've established, recovery also dictates your energy per turn when you're tiring, not just when you're out of energy. And you can't do much if your energy per turns in the doldrums at the end of a race. Some more good scouting here. Good to Sawyer. Could be good for next season, but I think we already have Tyler Campbell, so he might miss the cut, especially if I'm getting that sprinter for an earlier. Anyway, Tour of Gasmia. At the bare minimum, this is the Tour of Herman Watson wants to win if we want to consider it a successful career. It's his home tour and the biggest prestige event of the entire pro calendar. And Gerhard Horn ends up doing the Grand Tour double this season, showing that this challenge is doable with level 11 riders. Meanwhile, Norbald Classic, this is Christopher Ward's major peak, but the route is hilly enough that Watson could do something with no peak at all. And this first move from the relay is really inefficient, so I decided to let the peloton go to save some attack points. Kill Rob uses this strategy in his series a lot. I'm a little bit more hesitant to try it, because if your entire team has dropped, the rest of the teams can be like, right, we're just going to go full speed the rest of the race and never let you back in. But it should work out here, and indeed it has. Or has it? Because several of the favourites have already gone and ridden ahead of the peloton. They decide they didn't need it. Meanwhile, we're going to be rejoining at the back and need two turns to organise the chase. And for whatever reason, these other riders in P1 don't want to do any work yet, even though they still have team leaders of their own in the peloton. Did they have riders up the road or something? Maybe, but in any case, they do finally agree to pull as we get to the biggest hill, uh, whilst Campbell had to knacker himself to keep the gap manageable to this point. But it looks like it's time for the rest of us to go it alone. The Peloton entity is not actually going to reach this crest in two turns, meaning we have to ditch it. And it's going to be a team time trial from this point, which does seem a little unfortunate because it's still a bigger group out in front. Once again, relying on them to not cooperate so well. It's still going to be a full turns deficit by the time we get to the foot of this next rise and we are going to collect some other teams interested in chasing along the way but it begs the question, should we have gone with this first move? But then the answer obviously would have been no, I never would have expected an attack from 250 nodes out to work this effectively so I never would have gone with them anyway. But work it did, and even the stragglers of the break make it halfway up the final climb before we reach its base, leaving us to battle for the very end of the top 10. Ward does manage to get himself into 9th, but uh, Watson 11th, that's agonising as that's worth no points, and we don't get a lot of points in any case, easily our worst race of the season. Ah, the AI got one over me there. Next part, it's back to the tours. We have two of them to end the season.